Monday's child is fair of face. Tuesday's child is full of grace. Wednesday's child is full of woe. Thursday's child has far to go. Dennis will be father. June will be mother. Janet is going to give baby a bath. And Alan will fetch the water. start our lessons. Every morning at nine o'clock we come in and we find our chairs. Our teacher is called Miss Taylor. She looks after us when we are in school and she gives us all our lessons. There are different lessons every day but every morning starts in the same way. Bless us all. But we do not hear Miss Taylor. We watch her speaking, but we do not hear anything because we are deaf. Alan is deaf. When he was three, he had meningitis. Since then, the world has been a silent place for him. In this classroom, only Miss Taylor can hear. To Robert and Rosemary, there is no such thing as a sound, no such thing as language. They don't even know what a word is. Without words, there can be no thoughts, only feelings, with nothing to join them together. What is a prayer to John? How can he know what a prayer is if he doesn't even know what a word is? The first thing is to give him some words. So we start with a game for John, who does not know what a word is, and for Rosemary, who has never heard a sound. They have never been to school before. Joan and Brian have been here a year, and they know that to win this game, you've got to watch Miss Taylor's lips. For Robert, a shoe will never be a shoe. It will just be... Now the game begins. And first of all, it is John who is going to come to try to learn a word. Which of all these toys does she mean? It's hard to tell just from the way she moves her lips. This time John has to be helped. But one day he learned that that movement means a doll when he's played this game as often as Joan. pick up have names, and so have things you do. At first, this is difficult to understand. Miss Taylor's lips tell Rosemary nothing. But Brian has learned what jump means. Brian has learned to lip 
breed. So Brian falls, and Joan runs, and Robert walks, and Joan loves Brian. Now it's John's turn again. John knows what his word looks like, but he isn't sure what it means. Perhaps it's the same as Brian's. Who can tell John what washing means? John learns what washing means, and falling, and jumping, and walking, and loving. He is beginning to understand what words are. You can talk to him, and he will know what you're doing. Soon, when he's a bit older, there'll be a new game to learn, and a harder one. These children are going to learn how to make words themselves. This is a game called speech. We learn words by imitating sounds, when we were too young even to know. If you've never heard a sound, you can't imitate one. These children have to be shown what sound looks like. There are all kinds of games that help. to make other letters, you have to start using your voice. You can't do it by hearing, so you do it by feeling. Miss Taylor speaks, and the balloon vibrates, and you catch the feelings on your fingers. Your fingers must be ears to catch that voice and send it back to Miss Taylor. Speech is coming. <laughs> And there are other games. Miss Taylor holds your hand on her cheek, and you can feel the sound. And all the time, you are getting nearer and nearer to words. These children are starting to pass through the door that silence has put between them and the world outside. They are beginning to understand each other. The great thing is a letter from home. Dennis can't read his letter by himself, but he knows what it is and where it's from. And he can take it to Miss Taylor, and she can put it in the simple words he knows. So Dennis will know that his mother and father and his brothers and sisters, who are not deaf, have not forgotten him. Dear, 
Dennis. I hope you are well. Mother will send you a parcel. Baby Irene sat in the pram. Sometimes Miss Taylor will make a mistake, but Dennis will not be caught. Brother Ray has 12 rabbits. That's Father Rabbit, that's Mother Rabbit. Love from Mummy and Daddy. By the time they are six or seven, these children are still a long way behind children who can hear. They still don't know many words, and it is only through words that their minds can grow and reach out into the world. But they have started to work together, and work is a more serious business now. Miss Massey's children are beginning to know where they are in the world. Is it Wednesday? Is it the seventh? Eighth. No, no. Shall I rub it off? No. Little Black Sambo has taken the children's fancy. They only met him yesterday when Miss Massey told them his story for the first time. They can follow a story now, retold in the words they know. For even the simplest story has words that are new to these children. A beautiful green umbrella. umbrella. But best of all, like any children, they like to take parts in the story and act it for themselves. Little black sambo, a beautiful green umbrella. Black mumbo gave little black sambo a lovely little pair of purple shoes. Then black sambo put on his beautiful little red coat. Then he went for a walk in the jungle. There were tigers in the jungle. The tigers were very fierce. Little Black Sambo was not afraid of the tigers. Little Black Sambo was very grand. And that is why nobody wants to lose Little Black Sambo. Don't you want me to rub it off? <coughs> All right, I'll leave it on then. Every story and every game like this is a lesson as well giving the children more words and more understanding. Lip reading must become instinctive to them, as natural as hearing. Morris? Tell Morris. Morris, please fetch the mirrors. All the time, Miss Massey is drawing the children out of themselves into the life of the class getting them used to the idea of doing things on their own. It is Linda's turn to give the mirrors round. She's quite aware of what Miss Massey wants, and quite aware of why Catherine is making a fuss. She doesn't want just any mirror. She wants her own mirror. The mirrors are for speech. By this time, learning to speak is less like play and more like work. Boop, 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 
start to recognize what sounds look like when you were making them yourself. But a mirror can't show you how to speak. There must be someone to help. Choosing the words that have come up in class, perhaps in the story, Miss Massey sets to work day after day to give her children speech showing them the shapes their mouths must make, making them feel the sound of a voice. When someone speaks to you, it's natural to watch their eyes. Deaf children have to learn to watch mouths. Little black sunbow. Over and over the sounds must be repeated. A word comes very slowly when you can only get it right by remembering exactly what it feels like when you say it. So sounds grow to words, and words grow to phrases. And Catherine is going to say a sentence. Who is that? I'm going to find him. What is that? Only one out of every three children who are deaf can hope to achieve real speech. They must be given strength and devotion from the outside. And they must have devotion and strength themselves, like Catherine. Only one deaf child in three will achieve real speech. Thursday's child has far to go. Four years old seems early to be leaving home to go to school. But for these children, school is the safest and happiest way of learning to live with other people. So they learn together and live together, and as they live, they learn. in life, she is the managing kind. And John and Rosemary are already getting used to their first term at school and starting to look outside themselves and enjoying what they see. Faces become brighter when there is understanding in them. Eyes and hands are lively, expressing what words cannot say.
And after a time, you find that you can use some of the words you have learned. These children are being saved from the worst enemy of the death, from being alone, cut off in silence. There are many good things in life that these children can never have. They will never hear music or the sound of a voice. They will find that the world outside is often in a hurry and that luckier people who have hearing are often impatient with those who have none. But these children will not be unprepared. There is a spirit in them which will make up for some of the good things they have got to miss. Their world will never be the same as our world. But it can be a good world all the same. Thank you.